Hello folks and welcome to GED Microlearning. My name is Dr. MCR and this is GED Math Test 23. Our first basic arithmetic problem today is a probability problem which also involves um, knowing how to subtract fractions. A game show host is giving a weekend trip to a city in the, in the US. What is the probability of not getting New York City? So they give you this little spinner and you can see that there's Memphis, you can get Denver, New York City, Boston, LA, or New York City again. And the question is asking you, what is the probability of not getting New York City? Sorry, New York. <laughs> All right, so um, let's first get some numbers. So how many uh, options do we have? So we have six. Okay, and how many uh, options uh, or probabilities of getting New York City? There's two, right? So getting New York City, two. And that means that not getting New York City would be four. And they, now they're asking you what the probability of not getting New York City is. So what will you, you would do here is you would um, subtract that um, not getting New York City, that fraction four over six, from one or six over six. Okay, there's six options, right? So six over six, that would be one, subtracted by four sixths. That gives you two sixths, and if you uh, reduce it, that gives you one third. So the probability of not getting New York City would be one third, which is answered uh, C. Question two is an applied arithmetic problem that looks at rates. A taxi driver traveled 340 miles in six hours. What was the average speed in miles per hour? Okay, so this is kind of a trick for your questions. Whenever you see this term, miles per hour, what that's telling you is that this is a rate problem. All right, and the um, formula that you're gonna use is this. Rate is equal to distance divided by time. This formula is not provided for you in the GED, but it is really, really useful to know because sometimes you get these problems, um, you know, and it's kind of like a, an easy problem if you know the formula. All right, so all you have to do now is basically introduce the values that they've given you. So we know that distance is 340 miles and the time is six hours. So you just plug that into your equation like this, and that's gonna give you the rate, okay, in miles per hour, excuse me, which is 56.67 miles per hour. And that's all there is to this question. But again, I would really um, try to commit that equation to memory because it is gonna come in very, very handy. Question three is an algebra problem. It says, evaluate the expression 2x minus 5y minus 7 plus 3xz when x is equal to minus 4, y is 1, and z is minus 2. All right, so when you first look at this expression, it looks a little bit scary and kind of messy, okay? Because we have three different variables. We have an x, we have a y, we have a z. It's actually very simple. All you have to do is take it step by step, okay? So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the x value, all right? So wherever you have an x value in your original equation, you're gonna plug in the value that they give you there, which is minus four, okay? So if we look at the first number, two x, we're gonna substitute that x by minus four. And then if we look at the last number uh, expression, three x z, we're gonna substitute that x by minus four. Then we're gonna go ahead and look at the y, okay? So wherever you have a y in your expression, you're gonna introduce that one. So instead of having five y, we're gonna have five multiplied by one. And finally, we're gonna do the same thing with the z, okay? So in the last expression, instead of three x z, we're gonna multiply, we're gonna plug in that minus two where the z is. All right, and that's your expression. Now, all you have to do is solve this. Okay, so the first uh, two multiplied by minus four would give us minus eight. And then in that second parentheses, we have five multiplied by one minus seven. Okay, so five times one would be five minus seven. And then we have three multiplied by minus four multiplied by minus two. So let's do the parentheses four first, minus four 
multiplied by minus 2 is 8, so we end up with 3 multiplied by 8. Um, excuse me, I think I said minus 8 before. So remember, whenever you multiply two negative numbers, it's actually a positive number, okay? So minus 4 multiplied by minus 2 is 8. All right, and now all, all you're going to do is just solve this, okay? So we end up with minus 8, minus um, 5 minus 2 is um, minus 2, plus 3 multiplied by 8, which gives us 24. Okay, so if you say negative 8 minus minus 2, that's the same thing as saying minus 8 plus 2, okay? So whenever you have these two subtracting if a negative number, it's actually the same as saying adding a number, okay? Um, so we're going to have minus 6 plus 24, and that gives you 18. Okay, so you can see it's a little bit of an engaged problem because you have to go step by step and make sure, you know, you get all your signs correct. Um, but you can see that even though it takes a little bit of time, it's not super complicated. Okay, so that's uh, answer C, which is 18. Question four is also an algebra problem, which involves adding polynomials. And it says, add, um, and in parentheses, 5x squared plus 3x minus 2 plus, and then it gives you a second parentheses, 7x squared minus 10x plus 20x. Okay, so just a little trick uh, for these sort of questions to save you time and kind of, um, you know, sanity, is when you look at a question like this, notice that there's only one number out of all of these um, uh, expressions that doesn't have an x value attached to it. Okay, so that's that number. Okay, minus 2. All of your other numbers have an x value attached to them. What does that tell you? It tells you that in your answer, you can only have um, this number, minus 2, right? You can't have any other number because there's no other number that you're going to add or subtract. There's only minus 2. So if you look at your answer options, you have in A, you have a minus 2, and in C, you have a minus 2. So what's that that's telling you is that your answer is either going to be A or C. It's not going to be answer B, which says uh, plus 5, right? Because as we, in the original expression, we only have minus 2. And if you look at answer D, the whole number is 40. So of course it's not going to be 40. We don't have a 40 in the original expression. We only have minus 2. There's nothing to add it to or to subtract to. Okay, so you can cross these two out. And then... Um, Basically, your answer is going to either be A or C. Okay, so the first thing that I like to do is um, let's start simplifying. So let's look at the second parentheses, okay? That's 7x squared minus 10x plus 20x. And let's solve for that. So what you want to do is you want to add common terms. In this case, minus 10x plus 20x. What would that give you? 10x, absolutely. So you end up with 7x squared plus 10x. All right, so your formula now looks like this, a little bit uh, cleaner. Second thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add all common terms, starting with the numbers that have an x squared. Okay, so we have 5x squared and we have 7x squared. So you would add 5 plus 12, that gives you, excuse me, 5 plus 7, that gives you 12, and you end up with 12x squared plus 3x minus 2 plus 10x. Okay, next thing that you're going to do, you're going to add those numbers that have an x value attached to them. So 3x plus 10x. Okay, so 3 plus 10, 13. So you end up with 12x squared plus 13x and then just minus 2 because that whole number, as we said, there's no other whole number that you have to add or, or subtract. So if you look back at your answer, we said that your answer was either going to be A or C, and you can see here how that checks out. Your answer is A. The final question today is a geometry problem that involves the Pythagorean theorem. 
And they always have these problems where they talk about like a tower or a lighthouse casting a shadow and blah de blah. Okay, um, and the thing here is that it gets kind of intimidating, but again, it's just kind of trying to understand what the examiner wants. So, a lighthouse casts a shadow 12 feet long. The distance from the top of the tower to the end of the shadow is 50 feet. Approximately how tall is the lighthouse? So what they want you to realize is that um, the shadow that the lighthouse is casting is forming a right angle triangle like that. Okay, and it tells you the lighthouse casts a shadow 12 feet long. So that bot <coughs> excuse me, so that bottom is gonna be 12 feet long. Okay, that's how long the shadow is. And then it tells you the distance from the top of the tower to the end of the shadow is 50 feet. Okay, so this is the 50 feet that they're giving you. And they're asking you in the question, approximately how tall is the lighthouse? Okay, so the height. They're giving you two of those sides and they want you to find out the third one. So the main thing with this problem, again, when you read it, it's kind of like, what are they asking me? As long as you uh, understand that what they're asking you is to set up this right angle triangle, then you know it's pretty kind of straightforward from here onwards. Okay, um, so this is what we're looking at, right? We have two sides and we have to find a third side. And here what you have to use is a formula or a theorem, a law called the Pythagorean theorem that says that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So when you look at a triangle, the longest side, which is immediately across your right angle, is c. In this case, it's the value for 50. And the other two legs of the triangle are A and B. And you can literally, you know, assign them whatever order. Okay, but the main point that you have to remember is the longer side of your triangle, which is the one across from the right angle, as I said before. Okay, in this case, it's 50. And now all you have to do is just plug these numbers into your equation. Okay, so we would have A squared plus Sorry, that squared kind of came out, out of sync. Okay, <clears throat> 12 squared is equal to 50 squared. Okay, so 12 squared is the same thing as saying 12 times 12, which gives us 144. And 50 squared is the same thing as saying 50 times 50, which gives us 2,500. And now all you have to do is go ahead and um, isolate that value for A. So what you would do is on your left side, you would subtract 144. Remember that what you do on the left, we have to do on the right. So we do that on the right side as well. And what that is going to allow us is to cancel that number on your left side. Okay, because minus 144 plus positive 144 is going to be zero. So we can cancel that out. And now that gives us a squared is equal to 2,356. Okay, and the last step is that we have that, um, <clears throat> that exponent, that a uh, squared. So the way that you get rid of it is to take the square root. So if you take the square root of a squared, that would give you a. And the square root of 2,356 gives you 48.54 feet. Okay, so that 48.54 feet is how tall your lighthouse is. Um, I have a whole video on the Pythagorean theorem. So if this is some a concept that is still a little bit not so clear for you, I'm leaving a card in the top right corner of the screen right now. Make sure you t check it out. It's like half an hour of Pythagorean theorem. You will be super um, expert after you've gone through that. Okay. All right, folks. Well, that's it for today. I hope you found that useful. Um, as always, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for watching. Have a terrific week. Stay positive and stay hard. <laughs>